what's good sponge murphy here so i decided to start doing another let's paint video um, i have so many age of sigmar models from the starter box to do right now and i just have to get started on them sooner or later so i'm gonna start doing the blood reavers yeah blood reavers. i keep calling them marauders I have to make sure i said blood reavers and um, yeah so i'm going to be doing a let's paint i'm gonna, just going to be doing these two at a time um, simply because doing the whole unit will just take too long um, and just for you know for the video I'm just going to be concentrating on two models and um, I will be showing what paints I use and everything like that so um, I'm looking forward to getting these two done uh, the standard I'll be painting to is pretty much tabletop standard it's the best I can go for um, tabletop standard with a little bit extra you know I can put the highlights in at the end and they look pretty decent they come out alright um, you know these are really good fun guys to paint and um, I really enjoyed them and if you stay tuned to the end of the video I'll show you what bases I'm going to be doing on these and um, because I already have one guy finished I just had to finish a few highlights on him but I just right now 10 minutes ago I'm only after finishing his base so if any of us any of you guys have seen the last live stream video I did it's the hobby hour 5 I think it's called and um, it will show what base I was working on so I just have to get it finished so let's get started spray on nicely coated on them nice and level hopefully it's not lumped up too much I'm pretty decent at spraying and um, I always spray my models white it's just the way I've been I've always done it and um, so first off I'm just gonna work on the skin so for the base color I'm gonna be using rack hard flesh it's the newer one and then after that I'm gonna be working up a layer uh, or a layer or two of flared one flesh because it's pretty transparent um, so the main focus is the skin first and then work it in the rest of the model just because the skin is you know it's most of it and I don't want to get um, colors mixed up with each other and everything so stay tuned I'm going to I'm gonna do one with just Rackard flesh and then the other one I'll do with the Rackard flesh with the flare flared one flesh on top of it just so you can see the difference and um, I want to call these guys bebop and rocksteady so be up and rocksteady are going to be getting their skin on right now okay guys so i have the rack art flesh on bebop or rocksteady this guy is and as you can see it's a pretty toned down colors you know it's not the darkest but it's you know it's not a normal flesh color and here it is with the flayed one flesh on it it obviously brightens it up a good bit and um, it's a nice tone for skin to use you know instead of me just using the old tolerant flesh colors that I use for every piece of skin you know it's just nice to do something different so um, that's just one layer on it. I'm just gonna let it dry a little bit more and put another layer on it um, and then to get the, this section of the skin finished I'm going to go over with if I can find it right wing flesh shape that would really you know it'll fill in the the crevices and all that and then put more of a flesh color back into it so what you guys done on that stay tuned all right so the right wing flesh wash is on and um, it really you know does the job for the skin tone it makes the dark parts um, a lot more darker makes uh, the skin pop a little bit more um, I really like this flesh on you know this skin tone um, I know the strap there is like completely skin color but um, you know the skin it looks good um, so that's it for the base on the skin so what I'm going to now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the pants and um, any metals and um, pretty much I'm just going to base coat whatever needs to be base coated now um, so I'll do that um, should I think what was I going to say? Yeah, so I'm just going to do all that and then, you know, in the next part I'll uh, show what colours I use and everything because there's so much little bits and everything to go on. So, uh, yeah. So, Bebop and Rocksteady have their base colours down. Um, let's have a look at this guy first. This is just all the base colours on it. Um, you know, I always say that I always cringe at the base colour section because, you know, it's the roughest part of doing the model it always looks like it's terrible but um this definitely was the longest part of this and um, you know I had light brown dark brown red gray silver that kind of bronze color there's so many little bits like little belt on these guys and um, 
And the other guy, there's a lot more details. You have the bone color. So, um, yeah, best colors on that one. Now, this guy, Rocksteady, he has. Second, just want to make sure I can pick it up. But the camera's kind of hard to tell from here. But this guy has the Agrax Urshed wash all over him, except for the skin. And some of the, well, the paints I did use for the raid, I used uh, Mephiston Red. Uh, I was wanting to use the new Corn Red, but the local shop doesn't have it. Uh, for all the silver metal parts, I use Lead Belcher. It's a pretty good uh, alternate to the old Bogle metal. Um, the grey part, the only grey part was on this guy. It's the cloth between his legs. Um, that was based with Adaptus Battle Grey. Um, all three of them went on pretty handy. Um, very little of an extra coat had to go on, they went on pretty nice. Um, for any of the fur, you can see the fur on the arms and any of the straps and belts and everything, you can see it on this guy more. You know, and he has them on his back as well there. I used uh, the old vermin brown. Now remember, if like these are old pants I'm using because this is what I mostly have. There's no need to change them unless I want to try something different. But if you go to the Daka Daka uh, forum, or just the website thing is, I put a link in the description anyway. And um, you'll have the, all the conversions for the colors, and that is really really handy. Um, and then just I don't have a decent bronze color yet. I don't like using the bronzes I have, so that's why there's very little of it. I have it on the top of the axe head here. Um, I have it on this guy's chest piece and a little bit on the axe. Um, you know, a lot of the, the parts on it that are shown pictures will be bronze or silver. You know, you have the silver and red here instead. And, I, and to be honest, I think the silver does look a lot better. Um, so that was with dwarf bronze. So, and of course, um, the boots are just plain chaos black. Um, so the next part of what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brighten up all the da all the the parts that I had to shade over. Um, and obviously, you're going to want to leave some of the shaded areas as it is, like in in the corner, inside that corner there of the red armor. You're going to want to leave that there. Some of the darker parts, you know, just kind of brighten it up a bit um, to highlight the dark from the light. So, um, yeah. Well, I think I finally have the two guys done. Um, there is a few little things I would have liked to have been able to do better, um, particularly the red army or the red ar uh, red army, red armor. But the only decent color I have for red is Mephiston red, and um, I've tried numerous times to use blood red, and I just can't use that color. It's terrible. Um, so you know, it's fine for you know for the paint standard I have and uh, so let's have a close look so first off as you can see the skin I got a lot brighter I went over it once more with another layer of flayed one flesh and it really makes the muscles you know stick out a lot more and um, you can see the you can see the scars on these guys I was really finding it hard to come up with a decent color for the scar so what I did was I mixed a bit of um, the old warlock purple with a bit of the Mephiston red and you know and with a wriggling flesh wash over it and you know they came out okay they were a bit brighter than I wanted them to be but you know I'm happy with them they look like they're kind of fresh look like they're big thick sore wounds so you know what they're good Um, I went over the helmet with Mephiston red I just went to an the bone over any of the bone parts you have the skull and the, the horn on the helmet um, the grey was highlighted with the Codex grey colour, just to make the grey come out a little bit. Um, vermin brown for any of the straps, um, just to highlight and to make it stick out a bit more. And then, what was the other one I did? Oh yeah, I did a Ushapti bone, just a dry brush over the any of the fur. Just to give it a little bit more colour and make it stick out a bit more and it came out. You know, okay. I just left the boots black. You can go over another uh, highlight of like a grey, maybe the codex grey if you want. But um, I just prefer the boots just straight black. And um, the silver, I was kind of happy with me work on the silver. Uh, the highlights come out. You know, some of them, not the part on the right here, it doesn't look the best. But the one on the left, you know, looks okay. The back and all, it looks alright. That was just um, 
iron breaker, just a lighter silver to go over to make it stick out a bit more. Um, and this guy, it was pretty much all the exact same, except this, the bronze part I had in the middle, and I don't like using bronze a whole lot. So I went over it with a bit more silver, so it's kind of like a bit of a mixture coming through with there. Um, all the bone hair was the same, the shop teeth bone. That was just a dry brush over that skull part. Um, his horns, I did them silver, just, you know, something different. With the iron breaker highlight going up along the edges of them all, I think they look pretty decent. Uh, the straps in the back and everything with the vermin brown dog come out pretty nice looking. So, um, yeah, so hopefully this helped you. Um, you know, if you're stuck for colours, what to do, or what you look trying to figure out what skin colour to do, you know, hopefully this helps you pick your colours and work on it. Um, I would have liked to have painted a few more of these and then do, do a painting tutorial. I think that's what I'll do next time so I can have a lot more colours nailed down, especially the red for the helmet. You know, I bet you by the time I finish this unit, I'll have that colour nailed down somehow. But, um, you know, tabletop standard, they're, they're fine, they're pretty good for tabletop standard, I'm happy with them. Now, for the base, I have one guy finished, and the bit I, I can't, I terrible with bases, so I tried to do, like, something different. So what I tried to do was, I wanted to do, like, a swamp base. So what I did was, I got that Nurgle's rock, it's a technical paint, um, and I put him on rocks, you know, as if he's in, like, a swamp, you know, a toxic swamp. Um, and there's like a dwarf arm sticking up as if he's sinking down into it with his hammer um, and you just basically you just really pretty much have to layer and layer and layer the Nurgle draw but I want to do another tutorial on that um, after this so that's what I'm going to be working on next I'm going to be doing the bases on these two guys so make sure to keep an eye out for that now, you know it's not a whole lot into it it's just just getting it right really just to make it look kind of nicer I don't think I'll be doing much more dwarf arms, I think I'll be using maybe skeleton arms if I can find enough. But um, yeah, so I want to keep all these guys on, you know, like swamp bases. It should look nicer than just, you know, sand and dry brush of brown or whatever. So that's it, that's it. Hopefully this Let's Paint painting tutorial helped you. Um, ooh, just knocking it over. Uh, I enjoy doing it, I'm really trying to push to do more of these. Um, you know, it'll push me to get my stuff painted and hopefully it'll help some people, you know, maybe, <laughs> if it's needed. So, make sure to leave a comment below, I'm really looking to get some feedback on this, um, you know, good or bad, if it'll help, you know, it'll help me do better videos. So, hit, uh, leave a comment, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, big thank you for watching, especially if you stay true to the end, and uh, keep an eye out for the next video. Thanks for watching.